morning at 8.30, <clears throat> you click on the same link. Yeah. And I'll phone you to make sure you get on. If you're not ready at 8.30, we can go at 9 or 9.30. But I'll be on with a few of the guys. But I want to interview you. So I'm going to ask you a question right now. Okay. Um, when you got started in your hockey school, you decided to give up teaching and start a hockey school. Can you tell me about that background? Well, I was a teacher in the early 60s, and, and then I uh, went back to UNB and played hockey there for three years and got my phys ed degree. I stayed for four. And then when I come back, I went with the Youth and Fitness Department of Education under Dr. Dave Boswell. So I was there for, I guess, 13 years or so. But anyway, uh, I wanted to do something other than coach because I'd volunteered coach in, since the uh, early 60s, 61, I think I started. And then, and then, uh, so I, uh, so I wanted to do a pilot project and give it to develop it meet with sports scientists and give it to minor hockey. And so I, I approached them and uh, with the idea that like, uh, I'll take, uh, I'll take 30 kids for three years and, uh, and I'll, uh, and I'll work with them and I'll design a program and, and give it to uh, hockey PEI for, for all of minor hockey associations for nothing. And so uh, I started, uh, <coughs> And they had a meeting about it, and uh, and and I I I'll ask for fifteen hundred dollars so the poor kids could come as well as the rich and to get to get uh, uh, uniforms for them, and uh, and so I would have given the money because we administered a trust fund with uh, youth and fitness. I would have given the money to give back to me, and so they had a meeting and they said, well, we're not going to do it because. The kids you're going to be working with may get better than the kids in in other areas, which is what we were trying to prove. <laughs> so they turned me down, and we went ahead and did it anyway. We kicked some money in, and and uh, and uh, three of us, and and uh, I started developing. One guy it took it, it administered the money. I th we may have charged the kids something, not very much. And so I started a meeting with sports scientists and started. Uh, I, I drove up, I took a leave of absence from the Department of Education and drove to, I think, Laval University to meet Dr. Marcotte, you know, Gaston Marcotte, who you might know. Yeah. And when I went up there, I borrowed my brother's old uh, Honda Civic and drove up and, and I didn't know him, he didn't know me, he was French and I was English, so uh, he didn't seem overly enthusiastic to see me. But I, I was hungry, so I asked a few questions. And when when he saw I was hungry, because <laughs> the teacher's always looking for a student, and he got excited, and he got up and uh, and started demonstrating in his office, and he gave me all his French research, and I had to translate it, and and so he became a mentor. In fact, he came down and camped in my in our yard. We didn't have much room in the house we were living in. And, and and come to visit. And uh, so he's really good to me and I met him and then I started studying all the, the uh, research by Dr. Wayne Marino and and, and uh, Pierre Paget did work with uh, uh, with Larry Holt at Dalhousie. And uh, in fact, we did a research uh, uh, after we did the one with Larry Holt on what was the best off ice training for skating. And it wasn't a treadmill, it was a, uh, it ended up being rollerblading and uh, slideboarding. Yeah. Just hold on there, Al. Stay silent. I'm on a Zoom call. I'll call you back, okay? Bye-bye. Go ahead, Al. So anyway, we started it, and we, we, the first year we had, uh, I started to really learn, and, and of course, I, I, I went to a seminar by Howie Meeker and John Mahar's, Dr. John Mahar's brother, from Montreal in 60, early 60s when I was teaching phys ed. And I got excited about, you know, learning. And I became a, I became a student and, uh, and I was hungry to learn. I grabbed everything I could. I took everything you guys did uh, 
from goals and all that stuff you, you produced out here. And, but, you know, and then, uh, and so after the first year with 30, they went back to their minor hockey associations and everybody could see a real improvement in their skating. And because that was one of the main thing I was trying to learn was hockey skating, not figure skating. Although I worked with them for the one summer and tried to take stuff that would apply to hockey skating. And, uh, and so I learned a lot that from there and I studied speed skating and, uh, and so, uh, people went back to their minor hockey associations and people said, what'd you do over the summer? Cause you look like, or what, what have you been doing? Cause you can skate better. And so the next year, year we had another 30. So we ran 30 for, uh, 30 for one year and 60 for two year years. And, uh, and they all started improving in their skating. And then I ran an hour hockey school and, uh, I had friends that I coached in high school. I coached a high school team in 65 and and uh, Robert, Bobby Stewart, Robert Stewart, who, you know, he played 10 years in the NHL. He was one of the guys that worked with him, a wonderful guy. And uh, anyway, he, uh, people like that. And I, I really thought coaching, I get excited about coaching. And and uh, so I went, uh, so then I kept, I started a one week hockey, or a one week hockey school in the summer. So. I did it in the morning before I went to work and it, it worked really well. And and then I started two weeks, four weeks and the deputy minister came to me and said, listen, you're going to have to do one thing or the other because I was taking time off in the summer. I'd take a month off and somebody else came in and work for me and and they'd make some money there working for that time. And, and so he said, you're going to have to do one thing or the other. So I said, I guess I'll do the other. So <laughs> I resigned and I was provincial youth coordinator and and big responsibilities and worked in Canada games and stuff, things like that. And and so I I I put my put my resignation in and that was the fall. In the spring, government started job sharing, <laughs> encouraging everybody else to do what I was doing. <laughs> so anyway, that's uh, that was the nature of that. And so it was. It, it was a struggle. Like uh, uh, it was, uh, you know, I was learning, and uh, it was a struggle to live. So uh, uh, I was running hockey schools every night, and every chance I could get. And Lois was nursing, and we had we had uh, four kids came along, and uh, then I decided I'd make a, a video, a skating video, and there was nothing out then of any significance, and and so I went to. Uh, I started, I had a guy from uh, CBC, he was a cameraman, very innovative guy. And, uh, and I started writing scripts and, and I didn't, I didn't, I did everything backwards, but Dan Vio, who was a, 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 T, a CTV announcer, taught me how to home, home edit. He had bought a cheap old editor and he taught me how to edit. So I did the rough copy of the video and uh, one guy from Ontario, I showed him what I was doing, and uh, nobody, nobody will uh, look at that. He said, and he probably was right. So, uh, so anyway, I got the video done. I was doing a lot of the editing in my Lois's father's uh, basement in the winter time when we were over on holidays, and so I, I did that. And I had to, then I took the rough copy into CBC, and it was a guy that worked with me to put music to it and and the audio. I had audio done. A friend of mine who was a pretty famous radio announcer uh, did this. Did this? Uh, Paul Skierman. He did the. He just read the script and we just jammed it in there. And so, anyway, no one wanted to buy it. <laughs> so I gave it. I gave. I was giving it away. And I guess you found it. You you somewhere along the line and. And you know, I never met you, but I know you were famous. So, <laughs> and you sent me a letter of encouragement, and my goodness, it just changed my life. And uh, and so oh, I. Uh, oh, can I interrupt? I I want it. Uh, I'm going to be editing this for people that have listened to a lot of the sharks calls, and when Al and your your and my background are pretty similar, um, we. We were growing up in an era of coach education that was unique. And you in particular 
uh, running into Gaston and finding out about skating. He was the expert in Canada at the time. And that's the time Dave King was beginning to create coach education programs, coach certification programs, and he put together the one goals one and two videos. So I got asked by Hockey Canada to do a presentation on skating. And I went to research something and I discovered your video. And to this day, it's so fundamentally sound and proper. Uh, some people just skip through it and they start with the icing instead of uh, using the recipe for the cake. So the foundation of skating technique, backward striding, forward striding, turning, and pivoting, it was phenomenal. And I did it at a high performance presentation. It was very well received. And I'm so glad I got to see that. And over the many years, you've re reworked everything. And I've had the fortune of being able to edit that kind of video. So for the listeners out there, uh, we're just trying to continue to share our knowledge so that this doesn't slip through the cracks for coaches today. So keep her going, Al. Um, you, you were just doing this full time for a living now. You quit yeah, your job. Yeah, I or? left in yeah, I left in eighty five and and I the only income we had was some of the money that Lois was making part time nursing, but she had she'd take care of the kids during the day and, and she'd uh, work a night shift and and uh, we would run hockey schools in the evening down in different parts of PEI and everybody'd come because they knew it was working. And uh, I had, I would have had the first instructional video in hockey, except Gretzky beat me by three months. <laughs> and and anyway, I, then I I started studying your stuff, obviously, because I, uh, you know, I, I Dave King was was you know was king, and 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 your name was like right up there. And I I, I just said so everything. I bought those. I looked at those goals. Video that I got them in my basement. I didn't look, I didn't view them, but they're there. And we bought I bought everything. And and I I started going to seminars. And I I came out here. I came out here for one and uh, to get my level five. And uh, so I kept studying. And uh, and kids started coming. We had to live off our credit card once or twice for a year. And but uh, it got us through. We ate and and. Uh, but I, I do it again because I think it's made a difference. And uh... well, Al, I want to talk about the difference it's still making because <clears throat> you have parlayed this into Andrew's hockey growth, and we talked this morning about how you're almost eighty percent full for this summer's sessions, and you've got. How many European countries being represented coming to your school? I don't know. I, I have to find that out. It's usually that we we had them from many, many different parts of the world. We were working a lot with Asians and and we, we sent uh, guys over into uh, uh, to Europe, to Switzerland and uh, what's the other one? Uh, another one that a lot of kids come over from there. But I think for our showcase, there's probably seven countries involved so far. But then all summer they come and we work with, you know, one of the Olympian girls from from Switzerland for a number of years. And uh, and a lot of the girls that we work with, we 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 started working with girls hockey in, in early 80s. And we, all we could get was like 15 married women. And but we we kept it up <laughs> and they. Uh, They'd come for a week and for an hour in the evening or something. And and then we later on, we worked with Japanese, a bunch of Japanese girls come over and spent a week. And I thought they'd want to tour some Anna Green Gables stuff, but all they wanted to do was stay on the ice. <laughs> and uh, we had a bigger bunch going, but that's when the, 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 the whatever hit there, destroy, almost destroyed a lot of uh, villages, cities uh, in uh, Japan. And some of them couldn't get 
leave to go, but we had over 20 or over 20 probably come and they and they'd stay on the ice uh, as and they were really hungry to learn. And uh, that was when we moved to Slemon Park in the early 90s. And uh, so we try to include that. And then Cassie used to come down and she'd uh, work with us and train with us. And, and her dad and I are best friends. And and she made a difference as well. And uh, but then our connection, it made a huge difference. And and uh, I didn't sell many. Uh, as I said, many uh, skating videos, but uh, some people t uh, scabbed them. <laughs> and uh, anyway, if I give enough away, that probably made a difference. And, uh, and but you know, the the one thing I I found out is, and I, I've been very conscious of it, is that there's so much to know. You, you know, and and uh, as I said to you one time, if I'd known how little I knew when. I started teaching and coaching. I would have, uh, I would have probably got discouraged and quit. And now uh, I realize how much I don't know. And I, you know, if you're going to learn, you got to keep studying. And a lot of the things I've learned, I've learned from kids. And uh, uh, coach, uh, I started a phys ed program for the city elementary schools in Charlottetown in the early '60s. So I, I got a good lesson there with uh, how to teach. Uh, how to how to teach kids and how to get along with them and I had a teacher that taught us uh, you know I learned you could be a teacher and have fun with kids a great uh, role model and uh, and then uh, the first year I come when I uh, I, I I had uh, previously worked in the bank and I didn't last very long there they fired me and and I worked with a finance company and they fired me and I worked in the shoe store and uh, I quit before they fired me, but then Dr. Dave Boswell came and t talked about physical education, and he sent a bunch of us in the summer of 61 to UNB to get qualified to be teachers. And uh, we didn't know how to bounce a basketball, but we went and started. And then I, I worked as an assistant with Spy Reddy, who was actually developed Billy McMillan. He was a phys ed teacher, big guy, six foot whatever, and... 200 pounds and he'd do forward rolls with kids and he'd play ping pong with kids and beat them with his left hand. And he just had fun. He had fun with the kids. So I spent a year with him and I learned a lot. The next year they asked me if I'd start a program uh, for all the city elementary schools. And all we had then was um, rubber balls and skipping ropes and a few hula hoops. And But we had fun. We always had fun and I meet grandparents now that that you, you know talked about how much fun we had and so i knew that fun had to be a big factor in fact i had one boy a couple of years ago call me 58 years after i was his phys ed teacher and and thank me for uh, being somebody he looked up to and and uh, karen and uh, <laughs> well we've all been there and uh, your son Josh is looking after the enterprise now, and I'm just hoping that people that might be listening to this will appreciate the impact of Andrew's hockey growth programs out there. I know that it fundamentally it's the soundest thing in the world. You teach, they learn in a progressive fashion, they have a great time. But the mastery of fundamentals is critical. But what you do off the ice in the classroom session is beyond most hockey schools. In fact, well, we do yeah. with your spring teams, and you have a number of spring programs, and you in particular have worked with uh, younger kids, the novice age kids playing whole ice hockey back in the day. You've done some remarkable work on leadership. and. For under 10 year old kids, this is something that just may blow people away when they hear what you have to say. So can you talk a bit about your work in leadership with young people? Can you just stop for one second while you have to use the washroom? Okay, I'll just stop recording. Okay. Okay. Just give me a minute. Yeah.